So I guess you ran into some controversy with uh, this Jacqueline angle, if, mm -hmm. if you want to explain that whole situation. Well, this is before, okay, so, so when they had Jackie on TV, and she was beating people up. Like, and she had just come, she's fresh off, like, jumping Chris Benoit from behind and, you know, clobbering, right? So they wanted her to, to go and beat a guy, right? And they weren't doing anything with beans and stuff or anything. So they called, it was kind of weird. Instead of just telling me this is the show, and like they had me go down to the offices. Like the WCW office, hey, come in for a meeting. Got to be with me and Kevin, you know, and Eric. And uh, they go and meet, and they're telling me, they, hey, they want, they want us to have a match with Jacqueline, and they wanted, want me to put, him, put her over. And I was like, you know, this, we, the, the, the intergender stuff that hadn't, hadn't been done yet. This is before China and stuff and all that. So it's like, it's, it hadn't been done, right? And, um, you know, when, when we're in the meeting, say, you know, there's Kevin Sullivan and, and Eric, and I'm like, all right, you know, we're, we're discussing it. And I'm like, you know, well, I'm like, how do you guys see this? And like, Kevin's like, I see you having a hell of a match with her. And I'm thinking like, <laughs> it's like, I know you're trying to put her over on TV, like, dude, but like, I, I know wrestling is a work. I go, but I'm 230 pounds and she's like 120. I go, what? <laughs> it's like, I don't, I mean, other than me going in there, like, as a, you know, breaking her neck. I go. I don't envision you what, how you're seeing a competitive match here. You know. You know what I'm saying? Like, I. I she goes. Then they go. Well, she she beat up Chris Benoit. You know. The, the, like Eric's trying to tell me. She she beat up Chris Benoit. And I said, go. Okay. Well, sh then shouldn't the match be against Chris Benoit? I was like, you know, so like. So they go. So okay. So what do you guys see me doing after this? And Eric's like. Um, uh, well, Kevin's like. He's like. Well, I see it like disappearing for like six months. You know, stuff and thing. And Eric's like, no, no, no. I I see like um. Like maybe like you know like uh, somebody tries to egg you about it and you get mad about it, you know something and they're telling me this and I'm like okay these guys haven't even thought about what they're doing with me after this because neither of them are on the same page and I've got four months left on my deal so I'm thinking like okay they haven't talked about re-signing me I got four months left and talking about me, me jobbing to a girl and so I'm like and then some just immediately thinking okay if I obviously if I leave here I'll go to New York and I'm just thinking to myself okay what are the New York fans gonna do if I come there oh they're gonna really Give it to me up there for getting, you know, that's my, you know, like my last bit of WCW is going to be my girl. Now I'm going to New York or even it's going to, like in their minds, I don't know how, how they think if it's going to cost me a job. So I leave, the, I leave the room and I immediately called, you know, Paige and me were good friends. You know, me and Terry were good friends. And Terry was on the, on the booking committee back then. Right. Was one, okay. Bro, no, but every single person I talked to, Paige, Terry Taylor, every said, don't do it. They said, don't, don't do it. Like I didn't talk to one person that said, "Hey, yeah, yeah, that's a good go, go do that." You know what I'm saying? So they all tell me, "Don't do it." And I said, so I went to Eric one day and I said, "Hey, can't do it." And he goes, "Okay, you're fired." I'm like, all right. So they just so got they got rid of me, right? And then um, they had, and it was funny because they had said that it's fine. You can, can I go wrestle wherever I want to after this? You know, if you guys they get that. And Eric said, "Yeah, our lawyer they hit me with the, the no compete before my their, their lawyer." Okay. Hit me with the no compete, even though Eric had said I could go do whatever I want, right? You know, so I was, I'm I'm stuck. So I'm stuck for four months doing nothing, and uh, <clears throat> um, and that's when I was having conversations. Jim Cornette, Cornette had called me up a couple times. Hey, what's your status? And they told me the exact same thing. I got my four month no compete. Now I got three months left. I got two months left. Then I called it. Then Bruce Pritchard called me, and he's like, "What's your status?" I go, "Well, it's the same as it's been." As I previously talked talk to Cornette. He goes, he goes. He goes, well, so what, so what was the story? He goes, well, I just, I, I told Jim. He goes, well, I'd rather hear from the horses, you know, ahead than the, than the horses. I'd rather hear from the horses after the horse. I'll never forget that. Bruce Pritchard's like, yeah. I'll never hear. He's talking about Cornette, like a guy where I'd rather hear from the horses about than the horses. Ahead. So, that's, that's the only real detail. I remember that conversation. But I just told him, I said, that I basically told the story kind of like how I, to, I told you, you know? He said, okay, so, uh, so the, they, they didn't sign me. And it's like, supposedly they, um, Somebody years later, I found out maybe through Russo that that uh, he had said that um he didn't give I didn't give him the answers that he wanted to hear or something like that. But I, I but Russo thought that I was coming in because they were putting a silhouette of me in their magazine, like coming soon, like the Honky Tonk Man's yeah. protege or some some weird thing, right? So out of all this, like they didn't sign me, and uh, I saw Sting in the gym, and Sting was like, why why did they get rid of you? Know, he didn't know the story of why they got they had gotten rid of me, and I repeated the story in the Sting. And Sting said, let me see what I can do. Sting went and talked to Eric, they brought me back. And I'll never forget Eric, he brought him back the first day. And it was like, uh, oh, we gotta figure out a way for you to get, put over Jacqueline. 
It's like, all right. So the funny thing was this, they, they cared so less about the mid card back then. Is that okay? I'm like, okay. So like we're sliding on, on the card. When, when am I going to put her over? You know, I'm not just going to immediately get, because I'm coming back. We got to get into the angle with whatever. <laughs> so you know what Terry did? Terry put the TV title on me. Thinking that, okay, there's no way that Eric could be dumb enough to let the, let the yeah. TV champion be my girl, right? And the, like, bro, they get the bookers like working yeah. Eric to try. That's how, like, this was WCW back then. Like, just, just no real, like, set plan, people on the same page or something. So they put the, the, they put the title on me, hopefully thinking that I wouldn't have to put over Jacqueline now, right? And so, so they kept doing it. But eventually, so here's the thing. So they finally started having the, getting the angle with Jacqueline. And Eric com comes to me and says, yo, okay, so here's the deal. It's like, yo, yo, everything we've known, you know, when you grow up, you're, we're not supposed to hit a girl, but you have this girl's coming after you, you know, so, so and you have, you've been backed into a corner, and what, what do you do? And I was like, like, why didn't you guys just tell me this beforehand? You know, it's like, I can work a match around where, okay, I'm not going to abuse a girl, but if she's out there kicking my ass, what can I do? Other, you know, I'm not going to punch her in the face. How do I negotiate a match? around a girl when, when you, you've been told all your life you can't, you can't beat up a girl. You know what I'm saying? But she's trying to kill you. You know what I'm saying? So that, so let's say, okay, I, I, can, I can work with that story. You know, not just like, okay, how, go and have a hell of a match with her. I'm like, what does that mean? I was like, okay, I'm, you know, because my hell of a match is like, I'm, I'm beating up a girl. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, beating my opponent. So, so it, it actually, and we pulled it off. It actually got, I was, I was surprised. I'll tell you what, she clotheslined me Harder than I've ever been clotheslined by any guy in the business ever, ever. She hit me with the clothes. I was like, "Holy shit!" I mean, you know, I, I haven't gotten concussions, but not that like what we know about concussions today. But but she, uh, they come to think of it, she rang my bell. You know, <laughs> so there she is, which when she closed on me, I was like, "Holy shit!" It's like it woke 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 me up. You know, I was like, "Jesus." So, but but I ended up doing the job for her. So, and then all of after that. Then China started coming, then then it was like okay to like just integrate, you know, guys working with girls and stuff, so. The saddest part about all of that is you would have been the perfect protege for Honky Tonk Man. Yeah, I know, right? Because <laughs> it didn't go well with Billy Gunn, obviously. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, I would have been working with the Honky Tonk Man, who, who basically, that's who I studied when I was developing how am I going to do the, the, the disco character, you know? The Honky Tonk Man goes out there and does this and does a couple moves like, oh, I'll just do like the same theory and I'll just go out there and do my dance moves, you know, instead like like when the Honky Tonk does it. I used to study the Honky Tonk like when he'd do it in the match, you know, so it would have been, we would have been, been a pretty good, that would have been an entertaining like like little deal there, right there. Plus you had uh, Cornette and Russo on your side. Yeah, well that had Russo on my side, Cornette I don't know. Oh, okay. Cornette was just, yeah, Cornette. Russo was the writer, Cornette was office. Okay. You know, yeah, so him and Bruce were talent relations, assistant talent relations back then or whatever it was, you know. I never spoke with Russo before he came to WCW. So I yeah. guess it would have been ultimately Bruce's fault that uh, that never happened. Maybe, I, but I don't, like I said, I don't remember the exact details of that conversation, but I, I just, I was surprised, I'm like, well, why would these guys not want this character? Yeah. You know, that, that seems weird to me, you know what I'm saying? Or do something similar to that. I just don't, I thought I was built for, I thought I was a WWE character in the WCW. And but, I remember that magazine too, it's surprising that they did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what, right. It's like, yeah, I was like, what, what, what happened, you know? Yeah. But then they got to the point where my no compete was up, and I was thinking of pursuing that even more, like trying to, like, still trying to get in the WWE, but that's when Stan met Sting, and Sting said, we'll get your job back. And I needed work, you know, back then.